HCL or HashiCorp configuration language is used to create Terraform configuration files. In this video, I'll be teaching you HCL right from the scratch. It's very important for you to understand HCL and its syntax to learn Terraform faster. So watch this video till the end. Let's start. Welcome to Cloud Sham. We are here on the computer screen and in this video we are going to learn about HCL or HashiCorp configuration language that we use to write our Terraform scripts. This is the second video in our Terraform playlist. If you haven't checked out, please check out the Terraform playlist to learn Terraform from scratch. In this video I'll be teaching you everything about HCL starting with data types in HCL, what are blocks in HCL, what do you mean by attributes in HCL, what what are functions and how to write them, how to write conditional statements in HCL, also what is resource dependency and so much more. In this video is going to be very very important foundationals video to help you understand the complex topics we are going to learn in the further sessions. So make sure you watch the video till the end and also practice along with me. Also if you want to learn more about HCL you can check out the official documentation by HashiCorp and their official repository as well. The links are going to be in the description but this video is all you need to learn HCL from scratch so let's start with learning it. I'm going to open my terminal and create a new folder to learn HCL. So let's learn. Let's create a folder named as learn HCL and open this in VS Code. For you to practice it, make sure you have VS Code installed. I have it already installed. So here's my VS Code. And let's create a file, name it main.tf. Remember every Terraform file should end with .tf extension. And we are not creating any resource or anything as of now, but still we are going to name it main.tf to make sure you follow the practice. Now I'm going to add a comment saying learning HCL with CloudChamp. This is how you add a comment in HCL and if you want to add a multi-line comment you need to do it through slash and a star symbol and you can say this is a multi-line comment and you can close this by star and slash. So this is how you add a comment in HCL. Today we are going to learn about what are blocks so blocks in HCL and there are different types of blocks that we are going to look into. Next is next is attributes. So what do you mean by attributes and what are they? After that we are going to learn about data types. So different data types like string, numbers, boolean, maps, list, etc. Then we are going to look, look into conditions. So what are different conditions and how to create conditional statements in HCL? What are functions in HCL and how to write them? Lastly we are going to see the resource dependency and more things. So this video is going to cover few more things that are not there in the documentation so make sure you follow the video till the end and let's start with what is block. So if you look at the official documentation and try to understand what is block according to HCL a block is a container for other content and this is an example here. So it's a resource block and there's a network interface block inside resource block. So a re resource block has some arguments and then it starts with curly brackets to help you give you a simple instance. So here's a simple syntax of block. Block is going to have a block type and then attribute and value. There are many different block types in, ter in Terraform. There's a provider block, a resource block, data block, variable block, output block, and so much more. So depending on the block type, you might have parameters in front of it or you might not, but there will be attributes and value here. So what do you mean by attributes? So attributes are key, value, pair. There's going to be a key and a value. So key equals to value. So let's try to understand attributes and block with an example of creating an instance. So here is the Terraform code to create an instance. So this is a resource block and it has a resource type named as AWS instance. There is an attribute named as AMI and this is the value of the attribute. Similarly, this is an attribute named as instance type and the name of the value of the attribute. Let's try to add some more attribute. So we can add an attribute named as count saying three, which means I need to have three, three instances. And, and we can also add enabled equals to true. So now there are four different attributes here, AMI, instance type, count and enabled. And if you look at the different values, this is the value which ha which is enclosed in double quotes because it is in string. This is also in string so it's in double quotes. This is a number so it is not in double quotes and this is a boolean value so it's not in double quotes which means there are different data types in HCL so there's string which should be always in double quotes. There's number then you have boolean which can be true or false and you also have list and maps. So let's look more into list and maps now. 
So what do you mean by list? List means list of something. It can be list of security groups. It can be list of subnets. It can be list of servers, databases, and so much more. So list is always defined in square brackets. This is what you will define and it will have items inside it. So item one comma item two comma item three. So to give you an example, you can have a scenario where you need to attach multiple security groups to an instance. So it can be a list of security groups. So it can be security underscore groups equals to in square brackets. It will be SG hyphen something then comma SG hyphen something again. Okay. Similarly, you can add a list of subnets and so much more in different resource type. Now let's look at what are maps in HCL. So what are map, what is map data type in HCL? In HCL maps are defined using curly brackets and they follow the key value syntax similar to dictionaries in Python and other programming language. So you can see here we have a variable block defined with map as a data type and here is the key value pair. This key value pair can be of different data type. It can be a string. It can also have a number in it. It can also have Boolean types in it. To give you, to provide you with another example, let's try to add the details about John. And here is the name of the John name equals to John Doe age equals to 30 is admin equals to true. So this is what maps are. And if you want to get the value of any of these things here, let's say we want to get the age of John. How can we get it? We can get it by locals dot my underscore map. And inside square brackets, we can define the term we want to get. So we want to get the age. So we want to say age. This is how you, you can, this is how we can get the value of particular attribute inside map. Next, let's go and check out condition statement. Conditions in HCL are very important to make decisions or to execute a certain block of code. And there can be various scenarios where you might be using condition. Uh, some, the first scenario would be different environments. Let's say you have production and staging and development environment and you need to create different resources. Let's say in production, you want it to large instance type. In development, you want it to small. Uh, in staging, you might need T2 micro or something like that. So you can use condition saying that if the environment is this, then create this instance. Another example would be you can also have conditions on certain criteria. If the feature is enabled, then do this. For example, if the database is public, don't connect it to EC2, but if it is private, then connect it to EC2. That, and you can define this in the form of condition. Also, you can say that if the CPU of my first instance is 50%, then launch another, then launch another uh, server. So to demonstrate this, let's try to create a, a resource here. So I'm going to say resource of AWS underscore instance. So AWS instance and we're going to use the example of the environment so let's create a server and inside this i'm going to say instance type so instance type can be generally t2 micro or it can be instance type can be t2 micro or t2 small but here we want to have a condition saying that if the development if the environment is development then it should be t2 micro if it is not development then it should be t2 small so to define this in condition, we are going to define the value of the environment in a variable. We are not creating it, but this is how you will be doing it. So variable of environment is development in double quotes, development. Then start the condition saying the condition will start with this question mark saying if the value of environment is development, then I should be using T2 micro. But if the value is not this, then I should be using T2 small. So if the value here in the environment is development, then you will be creating an instance, which is T2 micro. And if it is production or staging, it will be creating T2 small. This is how you will create conditions. Uh, I hope this makes sense. If you have any questions regarding conditions, let me know in the comment section and let's move to the next thing, which is functions in HCL. Functions in HCL are very helpful that can help you perform operations, calculations and transformations within your code. And HCL provides you with so many different functions that can use, use to manipulate data and validate inputs and so much more. Let's have a look at all the different functions that HCL, HCL has. So here you can see this built-in function. Uh, this is the max function to check out the maximum value among all these three. So the maximum value is 12 here. But there are also more functions. For numeric functions, you have max, minimum, pass, int, floor, all these things. For string, you have charm, pens with format join upper lower all this stuff you also have functions for collections for encoding uh, and lot more along with this if you want to have a custom function you can also create it using modules let's try to create to show you this in hands-on or with a practical use case let's try to demonstrate this using a locals block so in this example i will try to create a value for a person named as john and i would create a message using all these different functions saying hello hello john uh, i i know you like mangoes, apples, and bananas, something like this. So let's try to create an attribute named as name and the value would be John 
Cena, John Cena, and the uh, and here I would include fruits list of fruits. So fruits equals to in curly in square brackets I'm going to say apple. I'm sure John Cena also loves banana, so I'm going to say banana. And who doesn't loves mangoes? So I'm going to say mango as well. Okay, now I have two three fruits here. Let's create a message using all the different uh, functions that you can use for string. So I'm going to say message equals to hello. And I want John Cena to be all in capital. So I'm going to say uppercase. Using this, you can add functions or you can also, this is known as interpolation. Uh, so it's going to be in dollar sign and curly brackets. Inside this, I'm going to say upper. And I want to have this in capital. So the name which is inside locals. So I'm going to say uh, with double this local dot name. And I'm going to say hello, John Cena. I know you like apples banana and mango so i want to all join all of these in one sentence i'm going to say this dollar symbol again with curly brackets and inside this i'm going to say join and in this i'm going to say join this with a comma symbol so in double quotes i'm going to say comma i want to join all the fruits so i'm going to say local dot fruits so once this is executed and we the value would be something like this so this is hello john cena I know you like apple, comma, banana, comma, mango. This is what I output would be when we use upper, which is going to format everything in capital letters and join, which will join all these things in one sentence. So you can check the uh, more about upper and join here. So let's let me show you the join function in the string. So here we have string and here's a join function. You can see this is how you can join it. So here the separator is. Uh, hyphen we used this separator and we have all the values defined in the local so we are not using this. This is how you can use different functions which can help you modify the data in your code and create dynamic uh, messages as well. Now let's, let's talk about dependencies. Now let's move to the next topic which is resource dependency in HCL. Resource dependency in HCL is very important and you might be using this every time. Resource dependencies are usually used to create relationship between two different resources and also to define their order on how they should be created. And there are two types of dependency, implicit dependency and explicit dependency. Implicit dependency is done automatically by Terraform and you don't need to do it. But if you want to explicit define that there's a dependency between two resources, you can use depends on meta argument, which we'll be learning later on. So to help you with an example, let's say you have instance and a security group created separately, but you want to use that security group with this instance. So this instance depends on this security group. So let's try to show this with an example. I'm going to create two resources, one resource for AWS underscore instance and another resource for security group. So I'm going to say AWS underscore security underscore group. Okay. So in this instance, I'm going to define all the different parameters like AMI and all the stuff, but the main one is the security group ID. So I'm going to say VPC security group ID equals to this here. Inside this, I have defined inbound and outbound rules, whichever I want. So I'm not going to define that, but I'll show you how you can use this security group inside this instance, even though they are separate resources. So to use this, you need to say AWS underscore security group, which is the name of the instance here, or which is the name of the resource here, resource type. So I can also copy it and paste it here dot this is the name so i can i can copy this or this can be anything let's change the name to my security group so instead of this i'm going to say my sg and dot id because we need to add an id here this is how you can create dependencies resource dependency implicitly uh, without without using any depends on meta argument and this will know that i want to use security group here inside this instance. Similarly, you can attach this security group to multiple instances as well. And if you want to, let's say another use case can be you are creating a VPC, uh, or you can I can show that to you as well, like this. So you, I'm creating a VPC here, and then I'm creating a subnet. So I need to create a subnet in this VPC. So I'm saying VPC ID equals to AWS VPC dot my new VPC dot ID. This is how you can define dependency. And I hope this this makes your uh, I hope the concepts have been clear. Let's revise what we have learned till now. So we have learned how to define comments in HCL. We also learned block, what are different block types like provider, resource, locals, and all the different types of blocks. We have also understood what are attributes, which are key value pairs that define the settings and the configurations inside different blocks. Then we learned about the different data types like string, number, and boolean. String should always be in double quotes. Number can be in quotes or without quotes. 
booleans are true and true and false value which are without quotes then we looked into list list of items that are inside square brackets and it can be list of security group list of subnets uh, list of availability zones and so much more then we also looked into maps maps are dictionary which are key value pairs and you can choose to remove any value whatever you want and value can be either string or numbers or boolean anything so then we looked into conditions conditions define uh, condition can help you make decisions depending on different criteria and we looked into an example of how you can change the instance type depending on the develop depending on the environment next we also looked into functions and there are different functions you can use uh, to change or to transform your data lastly we looked into resource dependency on how you can use two resources together to make things more interesting let's try to create a challenge and i want to i want you to do it and also post this on linkedin if you are able to do it here's the challenge to test your knowledge on everything that we have learned till now in this challenge we are going to create a file in lo our local machine using terraform and we are going to insert some message in that file using string functions you can use as many string functions as you want to test out your knowledge and to make sure you understand functions properly so let's create a resource i'm going to create a resource and name it as null resource I'm going to create a resource and the resource type is null resource because we are not creating anything in the cloud but it is in our local machine and I will be naming this as file. This name is just for Terraform reference not the thing that you will be seeing here. We are going to name the file something else. Inside this null resource I will be using a provisioner. Provisioners are used to run commands and there are three types of provisioners. It's an advanced topic so we are going to learn about it later on in the later sessions. So I'm going to use local exec provisioner so I can run this in my machine and the command is going to be echo command. So echo the message and the message is going to be message colon i want to type hello world but everything it should be in capital so i'm going to use the upper function so i'm going to say upper and inside this so i want to have hello world all in capitals i will be typing hello world here which will be capital using this function and i'll show you once we run the commands so hello world and then i want this to be saved inside a file named as challenge.txt but before i do that make sure you save close this bracket here as well and now save this in a file named as challenge.txt once this is done I'm going to save it and go to my terminal in my terminal if I show you I'd only have two files and after running few commands I'll have another file named as challenge.txt we should have a message message colon hello world all in capital so I'm going to run terraform in it the first command you need to run to make sure everything is in place and it's going to install some things and if you check here you will see that few files will be here present automatically which I'll be explaining you tomorrow uh, in the provider section in the next video in the next, next command is Terraform plan to see what is going to be created and it says one thing is going to be added which is a file a null resource dot file is going to be created null resource dot file and now if I'm okay with it I'm just going to run Terraform apply so let's run Terraform apply command and once I run this Terraform apply it will ask me if you're sure type yes if no then type you can type anything else once I type yes, you will see a resource has been added and it says challenge.txt has been completed and you can see a file named as challenge.txt is there which has the message colon hello world. So th this is how you can create a file in your local machine using Terraform. I would have made this challenge more complex by creating this, creating a server on AWS or on Azure but I don't want to confuse you with those things because we are going to learn about it tomorrow. We are going to learn about the providers and resources in the third video. So make sure you check it out. And after we learn providers, we are going to create repositories on GitHub. We are going to create servers on AWS and a lot more interesting challenges. So make sure you watch that video. And I hope this video was informative. You have learned everything about HCL syntax to make you to make sure you can work on it. If you have any questions, any doubt, feel free to let me know in the comment section and also try to complete this challenge and share it on LinkedIn. And don't forget to tag me. Thank you and have a good day.